Hey guys and welcome back to a, another video. Um, it's actually the afternoon or I would say good morning but it's actually the afternoon. Um, Dylan is running the tractor right now and I'm about to go around the entire house <laughs> and dig a trench because we need to put gravel on it and we're about to paint the house anyways. So I'm gonna do that. He's on the tractor. He filmed some tractor stuff cutting some more trees down um, a few days ago so I'll put those clips here. I'm getting ready to walk up to the front of the property and do a little bit of tree trimming slash cutting down a couple of smaller trees that are really blocking the driveway. We want to widen the driveway a little bit so that we can get our trailer in and out easily as well as some bigger deliveries back here because right now it's, it's really narrow. So I'm going to go over a few chainsaw basics and things that you should keep in mind if you are running a chainsaw. Some things that aren't necessarily apparent to um, beginners using a chainsaw. First and foremost, chainsaw bar oil. You've got to have it. It is extremely important for your chainsaw, for its ability to cut, also stay cool. The bar oil here, this is a uh, gas, and then your bar oil is typically up here near the front. You want to keep this full, and you want to check it periodically and make sure that it doesn't run out, because if it runs out, your uh, chain is going to run hot, and when your chain gets hot, you can damage bearings, you can do all kinds of uh, bad things to a chainsaw. So you definitely have to make sure that you keep it topped off with bar oil. Also with uh, most chainsaws they use a gas and oil mix. You're gonna have a bottle similar to this. Basically one bottle of this goes in uh, one gallon of gas. So you want to make sure you mix your gas before you put it into the saw. And preferably use an ethanol free gasoline if at all possible. You can use regular 98 as long as you're gonna run through it very quickly. But you never really wanna store like a regular 98 octane gas in a chainsaw like this. It will gum things up and it's not good for it. So um, ethanol free, one of these per gallon and uh, just keep a separate bottle and mark it so that you know which gasoline you have has oil mixed with it. Also some other things to note, uh, this tool here, this is very important to be able to use a chainsaw. This allows you to loosen up the bar and then tighten the chain by tightening this right here. And as you use a chain, especially a new one, it will stretch out a bit. As it heats up, it'll also stretch out. What you're looking for is that when you pull this up that you can see about three quarters or so of the uh, bottom teeth on this chain and you want to be able to pop back in so that's kind of the desired tension for the chainsaw blade if you're if you're putting a new chain on keep calling it a blade it's a chain make sure that the uh, actual blade and gusset face forward on the top that's the direction the chain is supposed to go on the saw lastly some safety stuff you want to make sure you have hearing protection uh, at least eyeglasses. You definitely, uh, it's not a bad idea to have a full face shield and helmet, but this is sort of the minimum of what I would recommend. And a pair of chaps. Chaps will potentially save your life and or your leg. So these will stall out the chainsaw if it makes contact with it. It's got a lot of fibers on the inside of it and it's pretty thick and it, it actually gets ripped into into here and doesn't allow the chainsaw chain to move anymore installs the engine and hopefully therefore doesn't cut your leg they also make jackets that you can get but typically the legs are the most vulnerable part so these are like 30 bucks pick them up on amazon they might save your life speaking of safety let's talk about today's sponsor which is surfshark you guys have probably heard us talking a lot about Surfshark on our channel. It's a product that we believe in, that we've had for a very long time. If you have no idea what Surfshark is, it is a VPN, which basically allows you to surf the internet from all your various devices and be much safer when doing it. Let me explain that a little bit further. So I've set up this kind of janky diagram to give you a better illustration of how a VPN works. Basically, whenever you search from the internet, Think of this pile as all of your searches, okay? It comes from your device, in this case a laptop. It comes out and it goes to multiple branches of the quote internet, 
to oversimplify things. It's hard to grasp this concept, but your information literally travels through something to something else to something else and back to your computer. The answer does, right? So you search something out and it sends something back to you. The problem is, is that the bad guys can sometimes come in here and attach themselves just like that and start stealing your information. The reason they can so easily steal this information is because it's not encrypted. It's an extremely vulnerable form of information. So what a VPN does is it actually encrypts that information. So when it leaves your device, it's fully encrypted as well as when it returns. Your device alone knows how to read that information and therefore provides a much more secure browsing experience through all of your devices. So this is really just the tip of the iceberg of what a VPN service will do for you. And Surfshark's VPN will allow you to browse from almost anywhere on the planet, which means that if there's restricted content in your country or content that you would like to see that's only available in another country, for instance, on Netflix, there's a lot of shows that are only available in certain regions, you can actually log into your VPN in a server within that country and then be able to see that content. It's really cool service, and if you sign up using the link in the description below, you're gonna get 83% off, as well as three months for free, and you have 30 days to cancel. So you literally have no reason why you shouldn't at least try this out. That ends up only costing you about $2.21 a month, which is just an absolute bargain for what you're getting. So if you guys are interested, be sure to check the link in the description below and sign up. You will not regret it, I promise. I've been an active subscriber from them. Even still this day, I pay for the service myself, and I've been doing that for the last two or three years now. It's a really great service, we believe in it, and I think you'll enjoy it too. All right, let's get back to the video. So I've been uh, clearing out the driveway. I didn't really film much, because uh, technically it's the weekend. I'm trying to do this thing where I don't film on the weekends. Well, Molly and I both are doing it, but... Uh, I just couldn't help. This stuff's just too much fun. So I want to show a little bit of it with you. All right, starting off here at the beginning of the driveway, took this tree down, which was just laying over the driveway and dead, as you can see. It was just uh, waiting to fall on someone as they drove underneath it. Cut down another <coughs> tree that was broken from the storm right here. It was like at this angle. How big that pine tree is that pine tree is almost twice the size of the pine tree that we took out in the last uh, video the stump for that tree is almost twice the diameter it's the biggest pine tree i've ever seen in my life to keep going down through here uh i took out some more stuff just right through here it was sort of just like leaning over or hanging off of stuff just so that it wouldn't fall on anyone. Now I took this tree down here, which this tree is, unfortunately, was in really good shape, but it again was at an angle like this, like almost laying completely flat, which is uh, really stinks. You can see how much these are leaning. This was this tree here was twice as much. I'm gonna leave those. Those might end up making it, uh, but there's just a lot of trees that have leans from the storm some bigger lean right here but you can see how much that one leans this one was more like that so I took that one down i used a tractor and a uh half inch diameter rope this rope's rated for nine thousand pounds so used it around a tree over here make sure all these came across the road where i wanted them to and yeah these are the the main ones i'm cutting down these were either dead and or had to be removed for uh, future width of the of the driveway. The only healthy tree was this one, this pine tree, but unfortunately it's in the way. So uh, yeah, I got a handful more to go, but I'm gonna start moving these out of the way with the grapple and then I'll continue later.
now what he's doing is he's cleaning up the trees that he cut down from the front and he's you know grading um the driveway so he's getting that a little more done because we are ordering gravel in the next few days to be putting on the driveway which will be so nice no more dirt we'll have some nice white gravel for the front driveway so i'm just going to kind of film today this afternoon this evening whatever you want to call it of some yard work why I'm digging a trench around the house. Um, first thing is because we are pouring a new concrete pad here all the way up to right here. So the tractor can't really get close to the house. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the dirt away off from, wow, English. I'm gonna go ahead and pull some of the dirt away from the house so the tractor doesn't have to worry about getting really close to the house. But also we have, or the house has had termite issues so we have to dig a trench all the way around the house um i don't know dylan can probably tell you more about that but that's a reason that i have been told that we need to dig a trench and also we're painting the house i know i said that so we want to get you know the paint on the house as low as possible so you don't see the old brick duh so that's what i'm doing <laughs> okay so it's already on my six o'clock and i just got a little bit done so i'll show you what I've done, I only got about here, <laughs> all the way down to it there, and Dylan said all I need to do, we just kind of skim, you know, the grass part. It's like so blurry, sorry. I just need to skim the grass part out, and then we're gonna fill from the wall up to here with gravel, and then we'll plant some plants in here as well. But Dylan is still on the tractor clearing up the driveway. Hold please. Anyway, so I was getting to is it's almost six o'clock, so I'm gonna start cooking dinner and then maybe either tonight or in the morning I will take you down the driveway to show you everything that Dylan has done. It's pretty much like double the size it was with everything that he's doing. It looks so good, so I will fill you guys in when I film again. So over the weekend I put in several hours, not several hours, probably more like 10 hours on this driveway. And uh, I'll show you with you guys quickly uh, what I've been up to and then Molly and I are going to continue working on it today but basically I got a little carried away with the tractor and started on this driveway so now we kind of uh, need to finish it because I've already broke up a good bit of soil and uh, yeah as you can see I've started grading things and widening the driveway we need to widen the driveway by a pretty good bit because uh, we want to be able to get full-size equipment in here. We have a 20-foot trailer with a long bed truck, so that's you know nearly 40 feet of vehicle that needs to be able to come through here easily, as well as you know future stuff. So, trying to expand the driveway, make it a little wider. That means taking out some trees. Uh, it also means cleaning up some more of the storm damage and regrading and then adding gravel because whatever gravel was here a long time ago it has been clearly probably five years to a decade since they last put gravel on it so that's what we're working on today so we'll start here at the beginning of the driveway i've been smoothing this out with the box blade i've got to get uh, this stump removed i also have to get a bunch of other stump removes removed so i'm just going to rent a stump grinder but the idea is to widen this entryway so this was a dead tree. Uh, I've cut it down. We need to remove the stump. And then this whole area is gonna go like that. And then unfortunately I had to cut down uh, two healthy uh, oak trees, but they were pretty small. It was these two here. That's the only casualties of this project, uh, which we will use that. So this is gonna get cleared. And then this one taken away, that one was dead. And that way we're gonna have a really clear spot over here, I'm gonna get this cleared out 
so that we can save this oak tree and we don't have to take it out. So all this is gonna get kind of ripped up and then that stump removed and then it opens up. So really the main big job is this front area right through here and right there. You'll have two ways to get down the driveway. You can go this way or you can go to the left. Yeah, so basically you'll go like that, which that pine tree is probably gonna have to go, but we'll keep the good oak tree. But you'll have a little island, like she said there, and then you'll be able to pull off here. So if you meet someone in the driveway, a person can actually get off out of the way, or we can stage equipment here if we need it. It'd be good to have that sort of extra little bit right there. So that is the main goal. Been on computers all morning getting stuff ready for the patio build i've been talking to concrete people i've been uh, getting gravel ordered all kinds of stuff so busy morning well i've been outside working on the trench wow somewhere. look at how red you look in this for some reason what in the world why do you look like that is there like a filter on this thing we're uh we're spending our afternoon it's already pretty late we're spending our afternoon working on uh on this part of the uh, yard. And then this section here is gonna be a bit tricky. Got a real low spot here, but uh, kind of grading it so that all the water will run down into here. But I need to fill in, put a little bit of fill dirt here just to bring that area up and then kind of fade it into the gully there. Oh, it's a big job. that we might be getting our concrete poured on Friday. Today is today is Wednesday. So we have all day today all day today and then tomorrow to prepare for the concrete pad getting poured. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Don't know why I'm doing this with my hands. So, here's the back door. Concrete pad is going here. I think about 8 feet out this way across. And then all the way to the middle between this door and this window. So about right there, come out across. So we have all of this to kind of take down um, so that the pad can go in. And then we also have all of this grass here and pavers, old pavers that we need to take out because the gravel is actually going from this concrete all the way down to the edge of the house and then out this way like that so we have all this to do and also i don't know if we're framing this area or not i don't think we are one last thing before we get to work crock pot dinners are literally at the best i've already put it in so we can work all day and nobody has to worry about dinner it's gonna be ready about five o'clock ish so that's gonna be perfect did just get the final word we that's the vacuum in the background we don't have to form the concrete border we're getting somebody to do that as well as pouring the concrete as well there's Dylan on the tractor um, but also there's a few soft spots in the dirt so we are getting um, the same guy who is doing the concrete he's bringing his compact over he's gonna compact the ground this afternoon and then concrete day is tomorrow what a view Anyway, so that is the plan as of now. While he's finishing grading um, the backyard, I'm gonna still go around the house and dig at the trench because we are putting gravel around the entirety of the house as well as I need to do it anyway so we can paint the house, which paint has been ordered. We will talk more about that um, in the vlog where we do paint. Um, 
but I am so excited for that day. So to wrap this video up, I wanna share with you guys why we chose to do the patio the way we did it. Cause we actually changed our minds last minute and had to hurry up and get all of this stuff prepared uh, without filming it. So originally the plan was to just extend what was currently already here with the patio and just form it out to where basically we just kind of wrapped around it. But after the guys actually got here and we started forming things up, we were talking about it, it ended up making more sense to go ahead and spend more money to have them pour over the entire uh, slab and bring everything up another six inches. The reason we chose to do that is twofold. One, it gets our step closer over here to being going right into the door so we don't have as big of a drop so it doesn't look as weird. I guess it's technically threefold because the second one would be appearance. This looks way better. We get the finish that we wanted, because if not, we were gonna have to match the other finish. We wanted this smooth finish, so now we get the smooth finish. And then three, it actually brings the concrete up at a higher uh, grade level in the backyard, meaning that we're less likely to have water run over it. We didn't ever have that issue, but also we just doubled the size of the patio, so now we ensure that we can get the rest of the yard graded properly to make sure we don't have any water come across here in really heavy storm conditions like a hurricane. So that's the reason why we decided to go ahead and spend the money. And also the reason we decided to do, uh, to actually hire someone to do this is for the sole purpose that after doing the math, it didn't make sense. So originally our quote was uh, 21.50 to do the extension it ended up costing us 3200 to do the total uh, concrete slab the way we've done it now. I ended up having to bring in more dirt through here and we got the slick finish and all of that ended up costing a bit more. But after doing the math, it was about $1,200 in concrete. It was gonna cost another, say, 100 to $200 in additional rebar and materials and, and poly to put down and everything. And then on top of all of that, we also had to rent equipment, which after factoring all of that in, it was only costing us about a thousand to twelve hundred dollars to get them to come in and do it. And they did it in one day. They came in the night before, formed everything up, and the next day they were done by lunch. And it looks phenomenal. And it saved us a big old headache yeah. if we were to do it ourselves. It was uh it you know we're big advocates for doing everything yourself and i was a little bit sick about it honestly because i kind of made up the I made up our mind that we were gonna do it let someone else do it and i was a little bit sick about it to be honest and uh ultimately i'm really glad that we ended up paying someone to do it they knew a lot more about this than obviously we could ever know they're professionals we're not they had all the extra equipment that i would have had to rent so they had a compactor and everything so they were able to come in and compact the whole area. And speaking of that, I wanna go ahead and address that because I was, gosh, it was like 
freaking nine out of ten comments were talking about the stump situation. So I'm gonna go ahead and address that now, and I want to also address what we did in here to reinforce this, uh, just to clear up any confusion there may be, and also let you know that there was professionals involved with all of this. So we'll start with the concrete. The concrete, what we did was we put a poly down, some vapor barrier, and then we poured uh, eight inch by about 12 inch footings around the whole perimeter of the slab. And we put, uh, I think two or three sticks of rebar within that footing. We also poured a large footing through here with rebar because we're gonna end, or we're going to end up having a pretty heavy uh, fireplace here. It's not a masonry fireplace, but that's about eight inches deeper. So that's a total of about 12 inches of concrete with rebar in this area. And then again, another really large footing out there. And then that's sitting on top of three and a half inches of concrete already. And then there was three and a half more inches of concrete poured. So this thing is like a tank now. They ended up not putting any mesh in as they didn't feel it was necessary. And to be honest, I trust them on that. That's up for debate. Uh, we live in an area where <clears throat> we don't get heavy thaws. It basically never freezes here or anything like that. So we don't deal with the same things that a lot of the rest of the country does. So this area uh, right here has got rebar around the edges and everything, but no mesh in the middle. That can be up for debate. Go ahead, get furious in the comments. It was our decision, it's fine. All right, now let's talk about this over here, all right? This was the stump situation, and I know a lot of people got upset slash felt the need to tell us that this was gonna be a disaster. It's not, everything's fine. So basically that stump originally started about right here, okay? This is where the stump was. But we had a 12 inch diameter root going that way. So instead of just grinding the stump, I wanted to get that 12 inch diameter root, like a tree size root from going that way. So when we removed this, we flipped the root over. So the root is sitting about here, which is about eight feet or more from the concrete, okay? This area will settle. It will settle regardless whether there was a stump in that hole or not. It's going to sink. That's what happens when you dig a hole. It sinks every time. It hasn't sank yet, but when the day comes, which I know it will sink, I will bring in some more dirt. I have plenty back there, and I will regrade over it. I will show you a good example of what I mean by this. Come on. This was a two foot deep hole when we bought the property. I put dirt in it and I mounded it up. So the dirt was here. After rain and after driving it over it a few times, it's now six inches deeper here. That's what happens, regardless of whether there's anything in the hole, like a stump or not. Now, when, I should say, should even follow that up with if, the stump fully rots away, um, there will be a hole there, but it's not gonna be this catastrophic failure there. It will just slowly settle in over time, and I might have to add more dirt in it into the future. But it is not affecting the concrete whatsoever, in fact, I had the concrete people verify that for me. And just as a safety precaution, they brought their large compactor in here and compacted the whole area and it didn't even settle with a compactor on it. So we feel really good about it. Uh, we appreciate the, uh, the heavy sorry. opinions on it. Uh, I don't think I've, I don't think we've ever posted anything that was had more, I don't know, scrutiny over it than the stump, which I don't fully understand, but I appreciate the concern and uh, we got it handled. I don't know, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm just kind of talking to Molly now, but I, I was kind of over it after like the 50th comment and then it just kept going, but it's fine. We have a brand new slab here. We're really excited about it. It's a good foundation for us to be able to start building off of and we think it adds so much to the to the property already just as it is uh, next week we're going to be starting this whole area over here we're going to be doing 
a large gravel pad and and uh, fence and garden beds and stuff like that so be sure to stick around and subscribe if you haven't already because next week's really when this is going to start taking shape and then the following weeks after that it's just going to be a massive transformation today we had that giant light pole that was out here taken out i feel like we've had like 40 deliveries our life has just been a whirlwind the last week uh, we're going to rent a stump grinder so you'll see that next week's video um yeah thanks you guys so much for watching i know that these aren't just like dedicated project videos those will come out just give it time we're doing this as we go if we waited to do the project video it would be months before we post it so giving you these real-time updates and then uh, you'll get your product project videos as well thanks you guys so much for watching and we will see you next week